All right, guys, today we're going to talk about and go over everything that I use and some of the things that I think you should have if you decide to collect knives. Now, undoubtedly, you guys probably know that I like to collect knives, and as a consequence of that, I also like to use my knives, much to the dismay of some people. I do actually use these guys. So when you do use carry and, you know, honestly, have knives, you begin to need things to take care of them. So I thought I'd go over, just generally speaking, the things that I use. I thought I'd go over everything that I use, and honestly, most of this stuff is fairly affordable and attainable. Now, first off, we're gonna talk about the thing that's probably the least affordable, and that is the sharpening setup. So for me, my sharpening setup is a pretty basic Wicked Edge setup. Unfortunately, this system as you see it with these drops, these stones over here, and this base and all this just set up in general costs about $600. So it is not the cheapest setup, but I really do like the Wicked Edge system as a whole because it allows you to it allows you to essentially set your angles very accurately and sharpen on two sides at one time. So you're hitting basically both of your bevels at the same time. Now there are limitations to the Wicked Edge. It's not the best for every situation, but for most, especially like EDC knives, you can easily reprofile and put some really fantastic edges on your blades like you can see with this trm neutron you can get dull mirror polishes very easily so anyways um this is the sharpening system that i chose and this is what i use like so it's a wicked edge and i have the everything from 100 grit up to a thousand i might add i'm thinking about adding a few more diamond stones to give this a little bit more flexibility but honestly from 100 to a thousand and then up to these um strops which i usually use the green compound it does like i said you guys can see results i mean it does put a pretty pretty nice edge on even steels like 20 cv like that's what this guy is so things that are not always super easy to sharpen. So anyways, that is the core to the system. This is a, you know, that's, so this is the core to my system. This is the sharpening system as a whole. And underneath this, I will say I have some tool roll matting. So this is like what you would put down on the bottom of a tool chest or like a tool, tool drawer to give you some padding. I primarily have this here because this is a wood desk underneath. You guys may not be able to see, but um, this little guy, this sharpening system, like this base likes to slide around on the wood. So this mat not only gives me some cushion for my knives, so when I set a nice knife down, it's not, you know, getting brushed up against anything hard, but it also primarily serves as some traction for my sharpening base. In addition to that too, I also recommend having a little Sharpie like this because, um, It'll help you know, like if you're trying to sharpen, say you're trying to set something at like 15 degrees or you're trying to follow the original degree of the edge, it is very easy to tell where or what degree the edge of your knife already is by having something like a Sharpie. So easy enough. That's why the Sharpie lives with this Wicked Edge um, usually. All right, so that's the sharpening, but there is a lot more, especially to folding pocket knives as a whole. Of course, having a keen edge is nice, but there's also the action that you need to think about. So for the action, I just use KPL or knife pivot lube. I think this is one where everyone has their own different preferences. For me, KPL just works. Um, there's nothing really that I can say against it, but you know, there are like many lubes. Um, there's many different types out there. And so I use KPL and it's fairly affordable. Um, nothing too crazy, but yeah. So that's usually what I use is knife pivot lube or KPL. So then in addition to that, I usually have a microfiber cloth, something like this, um, like one that you'd use to like clean your glasses with. I have that guy here. This one just happens to be a Civivi brand one because I got it from Civivi for free, but I just use usually any microfiber cloth. This one sometimes is a little bit small. So I also have a larger microfiber cloth up here for cleaning off larger edges. And yeah, those things are super handy, especially when you have nice mirror polishes that you want to preserve or just keep your knife like fingerprint free. 
So then next to that, I have, of course, for disassembly and maintenance of knives, I have some good old 242 blue Loctite. Um, this is just generally standard you know, Loctite. Nothing too crazy about that. And then moving over to what you need in conjunction with Loctite, I have an Allen wrench key and this guy, is just generally speaking it has a whole bunch of allen keys to it so nothing too fancy nothing too crazy but i like to keep that guy because some of my knives especially my chris reeve knives actually use allen keys as opposed to torx bits so i will have that there and then of course most knives nowadays come with torx bits so i have just weeha um little tiny um quarter inch driver and then i have just the bit selector so you can choose anything from like t6 up to i think actually I think this thing goes down yeah, it goes down to like T5 here, but you can choose anything from T5 up to T30, which obviously is overkill for most knife stuff. But as a consequence, you have your T6, your T8, your T10, and those are pretty useful for knives. So that is the quarter inch driver and the bit selector. Uh, that has just a whole bunch of Torx bits in it. So those are what I generally use for knives. Obviously there are some knives with proprietary uh, systems such as hinder that you have to have specialized tools for but generally speaking I'd say 90% of my knives can be disassembled with the allen key and the torx bits and of course there are some like my emerson's that you just use uh, phillips and flathead screwdrivers to disassemble as well so like I said these don't cover everything but the vast majority of my knives use one of these two so anyways, that is essentially the basis for what I use to maintain my knives. And one thing that I am not mentioning that is actually directly below what the camera is sitting on is I also, to the right of this system, have two silicone mats. So I have my smaller Blade HQ silicone mat, as you guys can see here, and then I have a larger silicone mat here. And the primary reason why I have two of them is because invariably, if you're trying to disassemble knives, this is a really nice idea. Like this Blade HQ silicone mat is really cool and I like it, but it's a tad bit small. So I like to have this larger silicone mat as an extra kind of stop. So if I drop screws uh, or something like that and they don't fall on here, they'll hit this silicone mat as well so i just like to have a little bit more um option or a little bit more like coverage so that screws don't like try to run away uh, because if you've ever dropped like screws on wood they love to just roll around and hide from you so the silicone definitely helps with that so that's why i have the two layers of silicone mats and so generally speaking i'll use the silicone or i'll be over there to take apart knives and say like i want to sharpen a blade i'll pop the blade out of something like this trm neutron you know disassemble it over there put the blade in the sharpening system sharpen it up reassemble it and so on and so forth for any of these knives, McNeese, Mac 2, any of these guys, this is just basically the like standard protocol. So anyways, that is what I use for maintenance of my blades, how do I take care of them, and uh, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully this gives you guys some like insights into how you guys can take care of blades, or if you are looking for suggestions and stuff, for maintenance in blades. Once again, something like this sharpening system isn't super cheap, but I will say, usually I get a lot of questions of how I sharpen my knives. This is usually it, the Wicked Edge. And a lot of people tell me like, gosh, that's really expensive. And to that point, I will concur, it is very expensive, but I will also say, when you start collecting knives that are, you know, three, four, five, six hundred dollars seven hundred dollars thousand dollars none of these ones are in particular, but I do have, you know, seven hundred, eight hundred thousand dollar knives in my collection. And so when you start, you know, wanting to maintain those knives is when it becomes really important to have something that is a system that you're not going to ruin your edges on because the last thing you want to do is have a really nice custom knife you know a one of one and ruin the edge because you put it on a sharpening system that was either too aggressive wasn't set up for that knife um, and can't like tune that knife well so that's why i choose something as expensive as this um, wicked edge and as far as it goes with the wicked edge almost forgot to mention this little piece here that you guys see this is just a little bit of bicycle inner tube and i take this i set it into the jaws 
of this wicked edge and I do that primarily so that once again if I'm taking a knife that has a nice or custom finish or blacked out finish that I can clamp down really hard on that knife but not damage that finish because these are steel um, these are still like uh, little arms here that lock the blade in. And so it's nice to have that security of these steel arms, but they will invariably scratch your knife if you put it in there and it has like a coating or it looks really nice. And once again, with something like a stone washed finish like this, it's not really gonna do anything noticeable. But if you do have a knife that has a mirror polish or some kind of coating, it will get scratched by these uh, little jaws. So I put this little piece of bicycle inner tubing in there to keep the blade itself, uh, like the actual blade instead of the edge, uh, keep the blade itself safe and um, damage free or like scratch free. So that's a little thing that I do personally in case you guys are wondering what this is. It's not factory, it's just something I put in there myself. Um, anyways, that is the look at my tool maintenance setup or kind of my spa day for knives. Um, I think it's pretty good, it's pretty well rounded. And of course, if I come across needs or have specialized needs, then I will usually get those specialized tools. But for the most part, this is like the generalized what all knives or like 90% of my knives see um, and I can use on 90% of my knives. So anyways, as always guys, God bless and I'm out.